Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm working on all the in-between projects and we're getting one day closer to road ready. Now along the way there have been a lot of challenges already and a lot of projects that I've started but haven't yet completed. But all in all I'm going toward the right direction of getting on the road and so I decided to share a few of the smaller projects today that I'm working on so you guys can see that Rome wasn't built in a day. Uh, when I first started out van life, I had plenty of time before you all saw my very first video of what was in my van. Whenever I did that tour, I'd already been in my van for a little bit, kind of figuring out what worked and didn't work. But now that I'm getting closer to hitting the road again in a brand new setup, I thought that because it sometimes can get super discouraging as you're going, showing you all the little things that are kind of happening in my life would kind of set your mind at ease. Because again, even though I've been on the road for the most part for about six years and in the van since, well, one, two, three years, um, things change kind of as you go and you live, you learn, you adapt, and then sometimes you start over like I am. So with that said, let's get into our first project. Okay, it's van arts and crafts time, and I have this three foot garland and some of these tiny little clips. Now, originally I was thinking that I could put these clips on and that I would have to secure them some way, but I just slid one onto the rope itself and they have this little area that the rope can actually pass through. And check this out. So I'm just gonna use one of these little bunny stickers as an example, here we go. And then I can take it and I can just clip it like this and it, it holds it. So this is what I'm kind of looking at. So I'm thinking that instead of putting patches on my ceiling for the time being, since I already took them off, and instead of using photo frames, I can just anything I collect on this little adventure, I can put on this through these little clips. Okay, so I recently picked up this Fort Smith patch and I think that if I take it off of here, this is normally where I would put Velcro on the back of it so I could stick it to the headliner in the front. But as you guys know, I took down all my patches until it can go to the shop. And also because it's been so hot that the patches were literally separating from the Velcro. So if this works, that would be super cool. So I'm just gonna take this off, stick it in here and see if, okay, it will support the weight of it. So. Uh, this is gonna be a good solution. And because this is gonna be a shorter trip, I can easily change these things out if I need to. And um, I'm hoping I can go back to doing patches on the roof very soon because I really like that. So what I'm looking at is like every four or five beads, I'll just put one of these little clips on and that way I can have enough of them. I don't have to use all of them and I can move them if I need to because they're not secured but this will give me enough to be able to decorate with. I used something new with the garland, something I already had with the clips, and this brings me a lot of joy in my space, which is what it's really about whenever you're entering into van life. So, yay, one step closer. Now I also picked up some more chip clips. I use these for a lot of different things in my van. These are just super handy, and especially considering that a lot of times I like to make sure everything is sealed. Sometimes if I have like a bag of chips or something, I'll use one of these. But I'm also going to be trying out something else in my van. Now I have no idea if this is gonna work or not. And I've been using it kind of at the house a little bit just to kind of see. And I'm about 50-50 on if I like it or not. So I thought on this shorter trip, this will be a good time to get it out and use it. So this is a resealer. So I can actually take bags and then clamp this down. And as I move across, it'll reseal the bag. So I'm gonna put this into my kitchen items. With that said, it may not work out. So I wanted to go ahead and make sure I had the chip clips so that I can make sure things are closed so I don't end up with stuff going everywhere, especially considering I will be going into higher altitudes. Um, I find that being able to release the air from things sometimes is handy. So uh, a chip clip will work better for that. But this will keep my food fresher for longer if I can get it to work right. So I just found this on Timu and I'm gonna be checking it out. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. My parents have one also. And um, it's a kind of funny story because my dad was inspired to get this because he saw that Lady Bug Out uses one of these. So uh, I thought, okay, we'll try it. Dee likes hers, we'll see if I like mine. 
Okay, as I'm packing, I bought these little pieces of soap. These are olive oil soaps whenever I was in Branson. I got this big thing of them for $9. And the reason why I like these is because they're perfect for van life because I can stick a couple different like fragrances in here and then I can kind of use these as needed. But overall, this is gonna give me a nice selection of soaps and um, just gotta squeeze them into my little soap container here in some way, shape or form. There we go. And I'll be able to take a variety of these with me so that I can grab one and use it for whenever I'm at the mountain house retreat or another one I can use for whenever I'm showering in random showers, such as Planet Fitness. So I'm just gonna fill this thing up and then this is gonna go into my bathroom bag. Okay, something else that I'm changing up is I'm trying to conserve space. So I'm gonna do my electronics in a little electronic carrier so that whenever I need to take things in and charge them, they're all in one place. This will make it easier. I normally use this little bag for my camera items. And then I have another bag for all of my additional cords and things like that. But everything should fit in this one. It's a two tier. Again, this is off of Timu. So uh, I'll leave a couple links for you guys. Now I used to travel with something similar to this. It was just like this little board that had all these little bungees across it and you could put all of your cords in there. However, it wasn't great for carrying cameras and things like that. So this is much better. It's slightly padded. So this will give me a little bit of a, a little better environment for my GoPros. And of course, um, I also picked up a GoPro camera guard. I'm not gonna have time to get in a couple more of those. Otherwise I am ordering a couple more of those. Let me show you what they look like real quick in case you didn't see the short but this is how I'm gonna be protecting my cameras kind of as I go. So this is the little case. And again, I'm ordering a couple more of these. It's just that I won't have time for them to come in before I leave. So whenever I get back to base camp, they should be here. And these are awesome. It's definitely protecting my camera. It's kind of a hard shell, but inside it's velvet. And so it doesn't scratch the lens or anything like that. So this is really great. You know, one of the great things about trying stuff out that's different in my van is that it's made me think of creative solutions for problems that I was already kind of having. And so I'm addressing some of those kind of as I go, but in a more user friendly to the no build kind of way. So with that said, I have some organizing to do and a lot of cords and I still actually need to filter through and make sure I have backups of some of the cords because I always travel with a few backups just in case because you never know if you're gonna be able to find one in a pinch. And now, especially since things are starting to transition over to the C-type, sometimes it's harder to find some of those more niche ones. So uh, I have a couple devices that still use those. So this is gonna be interesting putting all my cords together. Okay, I have a couple of these. And I always like to keep a couple of these because they work with this charger, but also I have a couple other devices. So I'll probably look for at least one more of these. I'm gonna be taking my two GoPro 8s as well as my GoPro 9 because I'm gonna be filming lots of adventures and these have stabilizers on them. So they're a bit better than my big camera. This is also the time where I put all of these little brackets together and make sure that I have a closure for each one of them also. And anything that's broken, this is the time when I really check out the gear just to make sure that it's all intact so nothing pulls apart, so it'll keep everything where it's supposed to go. For example, this piece right here, you're not really supposed to be able to see all the way through it. And so since you can, it's missing the end cap. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this one away and then I'll bring a couple extras of these also because you never know what you're going to encounter. So uh, this one's going in the trash. I'm gonna continue working on this for just a few minutes, but you can see kind of where this is going. I sort the cords, I organize the cords, I place the cords where they're convenient and then I put all the camera gear, including like this kind of stuff in this particular pouch. I also make sure all the batteries are charged before it goes into anything. I bought this in the school supply section at Walmart for 99 cents and I call it my battery backpack because it's perfect for camera batteries. Okay, next set of changes in my van. I always travel with two of these. These are just little GoPro mounts that you can mount in your van or around your van. I use this one with the cell phone mount on it so I can watch TV. So I need to figure out where it's gonna go. And I need to mount my fire extinguisher, which I think I'm gonna put right by the door in this little space, cause that seems like a really good spot for it. Now this thing does rattle a little bit as I go down the road. So I'm gonna tighten it in 
and that way it'll shrink it to the smallest possible outcome but then I'll just adjust it whenever I get to wherever I'm going this will keep it from falling off and I think this is going to be a good spot for it right here that way it's in reaching distance but at the same time it's not someplace that's going to be hard to remove because it does stick pretty solid on there likewise for the time being I'll just stick this one here and um that way I have both of them together. One of the things that I've learned traveling as much as I have is that there are certain things that people will kind of just like ogle from a distance to see into your van. And um, one of the things that people notice is if you have camera equipment or attachments that are on the outside, they just automatically, if they see those, know that you have a camera inside. And so even though I do carry my stuff always with me, you know, this just keeps me from having somebody kind of look and see it and be like, ooh, I want to go see if it's inside. And then it's not, and then we have to deal with that. So, keeping them back here. Additionally, I just brought out a couple pieces of Velcro, which I'll use for my jackets later. Now, initially, I was just going to bring a couple of these pieces out here and stick them to the wall so I could wrap my jackets in them, but I don't, <laughs> I don't like that. And because these have plastic on the back, that means they're sticky. So what I'm going to do instead is take this and actually mount it to some cloth. Basically this, the jacket will fit inside and it won't be a big deal and it'll look like it's supposed to be there, but this looks tacky and gross. So uh am going to take this back inside, but now that I know that it'll work, this is good. Trying things out finding things that work and um, then making it kind of part of the process. So now that I've gotten some of those things done, I'm kind of going through and I'm really combing through the stuff that I'm going to need and the things that I'm not and trying to figure out where I'm going to put them. For example, since it's so hot, I'm still going to need more fans than I normally would during winter, of course. And so I'm trying to figure out how to bring all of my fans to really circulate the air. Now, a lot of people probably are thinking, oh, you have an air conditioner, why don't you take it? Uh, there's a few reasons why I'm not taking that. And it's not because it doesn't work or anything like that. But in this cut down setup, I don't have storage room. And because it is normally something that I put in my front seat area, I'm not going to have a space for that because I'm having to use that space. Now, if I had my other bed in, I would definitely take it because all of those things would be under the bed. But again, adapting to a new setup is something that means that some of the things that you like, even though they're super convenient and helpful, don't make the cut on being able to get in the van. And so I'm going to have to like just kind of wing it. And I'm hoping that because I'm going to cooler temperatures, that's going to be a smart bet. We shall see though. I'm probably going to be regretting it as I go through West Texas going, oh, it's so hot. But at the same time, it kind of is what it is. And um, I wasn't planning on having to travel in this way. I was planning on getting it out and being so excited, but it's just not feasible with the space that I have currently. And that's kind of the give or take with any larger things that you purchase for your van. And those are things that you have to think about whenever you're remodeling your van. I mean, who would have thought whenever I got the big air conditioner that I'd be sitting here on the floor going, <laughs> I can't use my bed. It's just life. I'm also going to take my neck fan in so I can charge it because I like to leave with everything fully charged so that I don't have to pull on my battery until later. Okay, moved up to the front. Again, some of this stuff is going to go in the roof, but this is going to stay in the front. So it's going to fit right there for an emergency kit. I always have some contact solution in here. And then I have these two chargers, so they're going to go in there as well. Then shoes off again, and back in we go to hang up our carabiners and then this. Okay, so I have a bunch of different carabiners. So I'm just going to hook one onto this side and then a small one onto that. And then I'll hook these onto the other side and that way I can use them kind of throughout the van for different things. But then I'm also going to hook this, which is a power station onto this side. And then I'll hook my cup onto the other side. So again, these are just hooks that were already on the van and then I can kind of fold them flat and then I'll be able to use these. These won't be staying as is. I'll use them for various things, but this is a good place to put them now. So now I'm waiting for my shelves for this side the containers to go on the bottom. I'm finishing the bed cover still, and then I need to figure out which jacket and hoodie I'm gonna actually use back here. 
And then if I decide to get another one of these, then I'll hang it on this side. I'm still not sure though. So I may just do the one for now. I also still have to figure out my Reflectix, which I'm gonna do on a separate video just because, wow, that's gonna be a process. And as you can see, it's quite warm out here. So I'm gonna figure out the measurements of everything and I'm gonna use kind of a interesting little hack to do that. So, um, so far I have my covers themselves, which go completely over. They're like a window sock. I then have my magnetic blinds, which I really like, but they have a tiny gap. So I want to make sure I get a little bit more coverage. And um, then I'm going to make a reflectic to kind of go in there too. And so that way I can have full safety. And I'm still trying to figure out if I want to keep my front reflectic that I already had or if I want to cut one specific to that, but I do have to cut uh, these. These tiny little windows right here, uh, believe it or not, you can see a lot through those if I don't have up a back curtain. So I need to cut little inserts for this. So the goal is no curtain. That's my goal. Um, is it going to work out? I don't know. It will depend on how much light leaks out once I do get everything in. And of course, I'm going to be doing a test for that one night after it gets dark. I'll put the Reflectix in and see if I can see light from the back. So that will be my other challenge for this week. So, so far, my two big things that I need to accomplish are getting much further along. So that's good. And um, it's coming down to the fine details at this point. And then, of course, packing the roof box up top, which I'm waiting to do last. Positive is, though, I can actually see the light at the end of the tunnel now, and so that's good. Uh, the little projects are really paying off. Each one of them makes me feel a bit closer to home, so to speak. And so just figuring out the little details as to where the things are going is the biggest thing at this point. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to keep grinding on that. Okay, so these are the three power stations that I'm taking, and the cords for regular charging are here, the cords for charging in the van are here, and so this is why I've been saying it's going to fill in really quickly. These power stations are pretty large and in charge, but between the three, I should have enough power, no problem to be able to be off-grid, even if I don't bust out my solar panels. Again, I'm trying to figure out how to make the most of this, and then also to, if I do decide to extend the trip, to not have to stress out about the work and all sorts of stuff that I do. So I think that between the Pecron, the Alpha ESS and the Vatid, I'm gonna be good to go. Now the Vatid is one I'll just use for like random little stuff. Like for example, I'll plug my phone into that one at night. No big deal. Uh, the other two I'll plug my laptop and my refrigerator into. And if I need to use my kettle, I'll use those two larger stations because they can handle the load. Now, as you can imagine, again, this is going to take up more space, but this gives me the ability to charge the scooter from the road if I decide to do that. Um, also, if I do not have sun, you know, weather's weird. If I don't have sunlight, these store enough that I should be able to function a few days without having to have a solar panel out. Now, with that said, I am gonna take solar panels. Again, they'll go up in the roof, so I'm not worried about that, but, those are the three I selected for this particular trip. And uh, I always kind of mix and match based on what I'm doing, what I'm testing, where I'm going. And the main factor in my selection of these three is they all have a flat top. And that's gonna be super important with this particular layout because again, I don't have that underbed real estate. I'm also at somewhat of an impasse because I have to figure out where to hold my water because before I held it in the front and I didn't like that it would move around so much and then I moved it to under the bed and I liked that a lot better, but you guessed it, we don't have that now. So I guess I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my water and then just place it in the van at some point and then kind of maneuver it as I go to figure out what seems like it would be the best. Um, I do have a small bit of hidden real estate that I haven't yet used and so maybe that's a good solution. I'm not sure. I don't know if it's big enough for the water itself. So uh, this is gonna be a bit more of a thinker, but I know that I have to figure out where it's gonna go because I carry a lot of water because I drink a lot of water. So um, that should be interesting. I can't put that on the roof, it weighs too much. So it's gonna have to go somewhere. 
Okay, this might work, I'm not sure. It may fly backwards, so I may have to put something else here, but this one is easily going to fit here, and then I have one that can actually tuck behind because of the way that the seat tilts. So now I just have to figure out where to put one, and it can go up in the front in my functional space. So that makes me feel better. Um, I still have a few solutions that I have to figure out, and that will come as I continue to load in the van, but for now, for now, I think I'm making good progress. So um, yeah, I'm gonna keep working and I'll see you guys on my next set of projects. Maybe it'll be one of the big ones. Ooh, that'll be exciting to get those finished because then I really will feel like I'm ready to hit the road. There's only two big projects left. And those, I can do this. I can do this. And well, you can do it with me. So it'll be super interesting. I also need to uh, wash the van still before I take off. So probably do that on the day that I get all of my registration and things like that solved. And so um, time's ticking down, date's getting close. Remember guys, we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time. And uh, I'm having a good time sharing this with you. So I hope you're enjoying. Till next time guys, bye.